Welcome to Elevate Your Life and Soul. My name is Marla Kennedy and I'm your host, life coach, mama and writer. And I help women master their self, moving from self-doubt all the way up to self-actualization, tuning into practices and self-care and really experiencing deep self-love in all areas of your life. Thank you for listening. I am so happy you're here and let's elevate your life and soul. Hey loves, I'm jumping in today to tell you about my new exciting membership, The Self Love Experience. It's launching really soon and I want you to be one of the first members in there. As a founding member, you will get an extremely amazing discount of only $11 a month to start. And this is for you if you are ready to get rid of that self-doubt and start realizing you are good enough to really tune into your self-worth, your self-acceptance, your self-love and get to that place of self-actualization. We will be doing amazing things every month from group calls to trainings to tuning in and doing the work ourselves with worksheets. It's going to be so amazing and I'd love to have you be a part of it. So head over to my Instagram at Marla Loves and you can get all the details via the link in my bio to get on the wait list so you are one of the first to know about it. I can't wait for you to see you in there. Hello loves, jumping in today, feeling calm, feeling open, feeling really blessed to be here with you. Um, I took a hiatus, I took a week off, I was letting my other half really drop into his work, his editing and all those things and connecting to being a mama. And I, it was challenging, definitely, and also such a blessing, such a gift to be able to spend time with them and, and not worry about other things, letting it go so that I could be more present with you here today. And now I am here and it feels amazing. So... Today, I really want to speak into purpose and and how you can connect to your purpose when maybe you feel like you don't have any passions. Maybe you feel detached from, from what that is. And I want to start by asking you, what do you want? Let that land. What comes up for you? I know I've asked people this in the past and they didn't know they could even have something that they wanted. Um, And you get to want something. You get to want more than settling for whatever feels comfortable in your life. Um, And, you know, it's so interesting. I I think a common theme on social media can be to, to really see all these posts that tell you to quit your job and start chasing your dreams and like theoretically this is great but you know maybe you don't have a clue what you could possibly do and it feels really sticky to think about that and maybe you feel like you don't have a talent for anything but I'm telling you you do and I get it because I've been there there was a period of time in my life where I felt really lost and I felt really confused and um you know I loved writing I studied screenwriting many years ago now gosh nearly 10 years ago I studied screenwriting and I loved it and I thought that was that was maybe my passion but it evolved and I still love to write but I love serving, I love supporting women, helping them tune into who they are, shift from that self-doubt to self-love and feel confident and especially feel confident about your purpose. Um, but it didn't, it wasn't a linear path and it, it wasn't, it wasn't something I immediately knew I was passionate about. <laughs> it's so funny, you know, I'm talking about passion and I just, I, I'm a, I like to like pick things up and hold things and all that kind of thing while I'm talking and I just realized I was holding an oil and it's called passion so um really funny it's it means I'm on the right path I feel like to talk about this today with you today but I wanted to share that um and you know you can you can love things and and find joy and be passionate about them like I love to dance I love to be silly with my kids and stuff but that's 
not what I'm going to make a career out of either. So there's a discernment in that. But, you know, over over the years, I've really learned and I really, I speak a lot about like your assessments and what I mean by that is your opinions and your judgments of yourself it's kind of that negative self-talk and for me I used to really think that I couldn't have a purpose and I defined what I was capable of and what was possible for me by my limiting beliefs so like I didn't necessarily know what my passion is and you don't have to know what your passion is. You don't have to have skills as such. It's, it's, there's a lot of conditioning and there's a lot of programming that can come with that can keep us stuck and keep us small. And just by being you, that is your purpose. Being you, showing up as you and really tapping into who you are authentically and I don't mean being who you think you should be and coming from a place of people pleasing I really really disagree with that idea I think that's not that's not purpose your your purpose your purpose overall is a lot bigger than your purpose work too like there's a, there's a definite difference in this and this can get a little this can be where it can get a little sticky because I'm I'm really speaking to your purpose work in this in this podcast episode. That's what I'm going to be really diving into and exploring. And I want to share that your purpose is um, your purpose is being you. It's owning your authenticity. It's showing up vulnerably and allowing yourself to be you. And that is such a gift. So just by being anything, you don't have to try, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to pretend to be someone else or try to be a certain way. Just be you. That is your purpose. And it's so crucial. And I really want to share that wholeheartedly before I dive into your pur- more into your purpose work. So, you know, for me, like, I really felt that I was average and I lived from like these limiting beliefs and and just kind of blended in because I didn't think I deserved to really be good enough to show up and have my gifts and you know you're so unique and there's no one like you and that is your power that is your medicine and you know I know that can sound it can sound airy fairy um but you are your brand whether it's in a business capacity, whether it's as a mum, whether it's just in life in general and not just it, because, you know, just can be a really limiting word to be honest and it's it's a useful word to take out of vocabulary. It's something that I often find myself saying way too much but don't let that limit you. Don't let your language limit you because language can be really limiting. Um. And I want to break this down for you in three parts, okay? So firstly, I'm going to go into your opinions and your limiting beliefs and the things that you're creating about yourself. Then I want to stem into curiosity and why that is so powerful. And I love curiosity. It lights me up so much. And then I want to talk about how you can integrate this and talk about commitment. So let's get started. You know, when I first started out, I would really have a lot of limiting beliefs about myself. I thought I was not good enough. I'd I'd say things to myself like, I'm not a good writer. I could never start a successful business. I don't have the skills. Um, You know, I'm not pretty enough to do live videos. That was seriously one of my limiting beliefs and why I didn't do live videos um it's just so silly and it's so but it's so easy to believe these stories that we make about ourselves but they're not true they're opinions they're assessments um and it's they're never true or false they're just not grounded or they're grounded and so basically what this means is if it's a grounded opinion there's facts to support it um, and I really like to dive in and mine for gold, I like to say. So it's looking through and taking inventory of what, if there's any weight to these opinions. Um, and are they useful? So say you took the the like the thing, um, 
I could never make live videos because I'm not pretty enough. Well, is that grounded? Is there weight to that? Um, and I would say there is no weight to that. If I look at the evidence, um, for a start, you do, making a live video shouldn't be based on how you look. And I can look at evidence and see that so many people out there make live videos and it isn't about how they look at all. It's about the content and what they have to share. And coming back to your message and your story, everyone is unique. Everyone has a story. So everyone can make live videos. Um, and then the, there's the other limiting belief. I'm not a good writer. Well, is that assessment grounded? No. I can I can look at that assessment and I can go into looking for evidence. So if I'm pulling in evidence to support that, I've got a master's degree in writing. So that is direct evidence that proves to me that I am a good writer, that my grounded, ungrounded assessment or opinion that I'm not a good writer is false. And I have had people, I receive feedback from people all the time telling me how much they love my writing. So you can, you can see what other people say, but you don't need external validation either. I really want to point that out. You can, you can just start to come back to you and really see what is true for you as well and re, start to reframe that. So when we make these negative assessments, like say you're saying to yourself, you're not good enough. Is that really useful? How can you reframe that? Um, these limiting beliefs can stop us. They can keep us stuck. They can keep us in procrastination. And I used to be a master procrastinator, so I really, really understand this. Um, and it can be a significant impact on our lives. So um, when you doubt yourself, it keeps you in inaction. That's what happened for me. And I don't want to project onto you like my my experiences, but I want to share from a place that's useful. So that's why I keep coming back to my experiences um, because it's really, I've really gone into these things and shifted them because of that. So um, like holding back your gifts, holding back your wisdom, not living from your place of purpose, um, that really breaks my heart if I if you're not doing that because you don't believe that you can. Um and if you can detach from these opinions and these limiting beliefs, these assessments, and you can question them, witness them, notice when you say to yourself, I'm not good enough, ask yourself, is this useful? Is this truth? Um, and catch it. Would you tell someone else they're not good enough? Would you tell someone else that they can't do live videos, they can't start a business? Because if you wouldn't, then why are you saying that to yourself? Speak to yourself like you'd speak to your best friend instead of like you're berating yourself. Um, you get to let these these go and you get to reframe them and create new stories about yourself. So replacing, this is like making affirmations for yourself, but I feel like you can go deeper than that. So you get to rewrite it and you get to rewrite these negative limiting beliefs like I'm not a good writer replace it with I am a great writer I can't start a business I can start a successful business I'm doing it now I'm not good enough I am so good enough and I have so much medicine to share I can do live videos and they add so much value for other people and then start saying them write them out start saying them and take it deeper go and look in the mirror and look in the mirror and say them to yourselves and start to get curious with them about the possibilities. Just reframe with these. Do it every day. Spend five minutes going through saying these to yourself and really reinforcing these new beliefs. Um, it's so valuable. And, and make them believable. I don't want you to make these these new declarations that you don't believe. They have to be a, you have to embody, even if you start with, I am open to believing that I could make live videos. Start where it's, where it's, there's an, it's new for you, but you can believe it because if you don't believe it, it's not, go, you're not going to be able to embody that and that shift's not going to occur. Um, 
Now, the next thing is curiosity. Get curious about who you are. If you're trying to find your passion or you're trying to work out what your purpose work is, get really curious. What are your top five values? Dive deep into this. Don't don't just scratch the surface. Like you can go, yeah, freedom, travel, family. Dig into that. What does that mean for me? Why is that important to you? What about family is important to me? Keep asking more and more questions um, and get deeper. So because the deeper you can get, the more specific you can get, the more you're going to realize what's going to bring you joy and what you can share with the world that's going to be really valuable for other people. Um, I, I used to get so confused by this. I really did and this really helped me get really clear about it and then from there you can start to play and that's so fun being in your creativity and exploring these ideas that you have. I want you to brain dump this. Get a big piece of paper, brain dump all your ideas of things you could possibly do or things you love, things that add value to your life. Maybe you've always wanted to try a pottery class. Go and do it or buy some stuff to do do it at home and see if you like it and then maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you like it but it's not necessarily something you want to explore but maybe it will become something that fills you up and will lead to another path. Just get really curious. I highly re- recommend The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. It's such a great book um, and it really allows you to explore creativity Um, In so many different ways, prompts, exercises, taking yourself on dates, doing stream of consciousness journaling, all of these things, these will bring you closer to your purpose. So it's really, really essential. And then, um, and then once you've done that, you can tune into your commitment and commitment is the gold. I am telling you, it's so important because how can you commit to something if you don't know what it is? And I'm pausing because it's such an important question. And like any if you commit to what you're going to something and to showing up for yourself, it's committing to you. It's committing to who you are. If you can't commit to yourself, how can you commit to anyone else or any other things in your life? So it all comes back. You real it's really crucial that you commit to you. You are all all the things you've been looking for and you know that like you want to play in your passion and discovering your getting curious about this stuff and that will really help you unlock your purpose work. And just being who you're meant to be. Committing to me to you means you're committing to your curiosity, your play, your creativity. Um, and it's about persistence as well. Like for me, I used to give up. I'd start something and I'd give up. And it doesn't unfold immediately. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes you have to just dance in it and, and really explore and allow it to unfold slowly. Um and you might not discover your meaningful work straight away. You might not discover your purpose work straight in the way that you thought you would. Sometimes it can be by accident and you can have this profound realization that it's something completely different to what it, you thought it was. Maybe it's being a stay-at-home mama. Maybe it's starting a business. Maybe it's just supporting your partner in his career and that it and being that like right hand person or maybe it's to be an international speaker your purpose work doesn't have to be a huge legacy that's that's changing millions of lives it could be something for you it could be something for your family start small and just get really curious and really play with it and then commit to something commit to you commit to yourself first and foremost um and know that I am here and yeah I'm gonna recap this now because it's so important firstly know that you are your purpose you are your purpose just by being you then I want you to dig into your limiting beliefs your assessments question them see if they're true reframe them and rewrite a new story to more positive positive affirmations look in the mirror and say them to yourself make sure they are believable so you can trust yourself and trust in them and then do it every day for five minutes from there get curious get really identify your top five values and get really specific on them 
tune into them, play around, see what interests you, what lights you up, lean into that and just have fun. From there, you will start to unfold what you want to do and and take little baby steps. Uh, you know, tiny commitments, talk about them all the time. They're so important. Just start really small. Take one step towards that stuff every single day and see what unfolds for you. And then commit because commit to yourself because you're the creator of your life and then commitment is so key it means moving out of your comfort zone it means dancing in spaces that may be unfamiliar and it's committing to persisting showing up for yourself and getting up again when you want to throw in the towel because there are days when you will want to quit there are days when you won't want to do it anymore it's not all like 100 high vibe joy all the time There are days when your purpose work will feel challenging, but lean back in and keep going because it's going to be worth it and it could unfold in ways you never even dreamed, but it will be so amazing. And then from there, I want you to let me know how you've gone, what's come up for you. And if you are really interested in purpose work, then I am hosting a free event, totally free. It's going to be so amazing. Thursday, the 28th of May um, at 4.30 Australian Western Standard Time. So if you're in the US, it will be early in the morning, but it will be worth it. Um, Wherever you are, I highly, highly recommend you sign up and join us. You can get the chance to win some amazing prizes. And the thing that is really amazing about this event is that I have got an amazing guest speaker called Jeanette Mundy who has been on my podcast before. So if you go back and check out my podcast interview with her, it will be like so good. I'm trying to remember what podcast episode it was actually and um, because I really just know that it would be really valuable. Um Hmm. But she is a really, really, really amazing speaker and she will be the doing a little bit of a masterclass kind of talk all about how to leave your legacy. And if you want to get a bit of insight into who Jeanette is, go back to episode 11 of my podcast where she talked about detoxing from good girl syndrome. So she knows all about people pleasing. She knows all about living from a place where you're not, where you're settling and you're doing things for other people instead of trusting yourself, which is why she's such a great speaker on purpose and leaving a legacy and really bringing everything I've talked about home and allowing you to step up into your purpose work and leaving an amazing legacy because you really deserve to so i will pop the link to do that in the show notes and i it's going to be amazing and you could win some amazing prizes if you show up on the night so really hope to see you there um i can't wait for this event and yeah i will see you on the next episode have an amazing day beautiful soul thank you for being here Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I am so grateful that you're a part of this community and I'd love to know what resonated for you or what you'd love more of. So please send me an email at marlaramarlakennedy.com and let me know what you are experiencing from listening to this podcast. And if you love it, I would be so grateful if you could leave me a review on Apple Podcasts and let me know what you love about it. Um... And yeah, make sure you give me five stars because that will help me be able to keep making this for you so I can do the best I possibly can. I really am so grateful for you. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you on the next episode.